We welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, to another presentation of Women's Extreme Wrestling WWE. My name is Joe Dombrowski. I will be your host for the next hour for what is going to be an absolutely tremendous look at some of the most up and coming and in some circles maybe as of yet undiscovered young talent in women's wrestling, but we're gonna kick things off with a tag team encounter. You're looking at Nevaeh on your screen right now. Her tag team partner is Brittany Blake. They are opposed by Jesse Kay and Naya Barella. It's Nevaeh on the right side of the screen now. Jesse Kay on the left. Jesse Kay, also known in some circles as Kennedy Brink. A well established prospect among the inner circles of professional wrestling. Looking to translate that to. Uh, Getting some buzz and attention here in WWE as well. Nevea, a young 10-year veteran, been all over the country. Known as a member of OI4K, Ohio is for Killers. If you have seen OI4K in the past, you know what they're capable of. They're very physical, they're very athletic, they're very intense. Nevaeh actually the wife of Jake Christ of OI4K as Nevaeh with a head scissors on Jesse K. K able to break free. Tag into Brittany Blake, the Blackwood, New Jersey native. Three year pro as a double team on K. He's here, the recipient of a back elbow, and now unique, innovative double team over with the head scissors. Brittany Blake controlling Jesse K. Jesse K is originally trained by Dwayne Gill, who some of you may remember as Gilbert, and then Jesse K had moved on for additional seasoning at the Team 3D Academy run by the Dudley Boys, Bubba Ray and Diva. Jesse K was awarded the uh, Mid-Atlantic uh, uh, Wrestling Convention Top Prospect Award in 2014. Les Thatcher, Rip Rogers, Dr. Tom Pritchard, and uh, many other high-profile wrestling trainers are well known for, for giving out those awards every year down in Charlotte, North Carolina. Dozens come from around the country, indeed around the world, to learn from the best. Jesse K stood out above all the others that year. And right now it's Brittany Blake standing out in this matchup with her athleticism. K has not been able to get out of the block just yet. And it's Blake, the Prado, the Bulldog, cover, and Naya Barella makes the save. And boy, has she got some pent up aggression. She's been on the outside waiting for a chance to get in, but Jesse K has not been able to tag her partner once yet. There we go, now we got it. Only the first tag made from the Jesse K Naya Barella team. And we'll see what Barella brings to the table. A seven year pro native of Las Cruces, New Mexico. Trained by Samu. The famous head shrinker, Samoan SWAT team, whatever you want to call them. Two count, Samu Anawahi. That famous family, maybe the most. Uh... Look at this power! Oh, Barella! Take it down, Blake. The most prolific family in wrestling, maybe the Anawahis. From their past, uh, Rikishi, Yokozuna, Alpha, and Sika, to present day, the Usos, Roman Reigns, even The Rock. Samu is part of that bloodline, and Samu trained Nia Barella, who has uh, found a way to control Brittany Blake. And you see she's got uh, aggression and uh, a no-nonsense attitude thus far. That comes directly from her training. Modified Dragon Sleeper. Bending the body of uh, Blake across that left knee of Barella. Barella tries to turn inward, alleviate the pressure, create some distance, but Barella can do that four up and over. Sunset flip by Blake. 
two and no. Blake is the least experienced of all four ladies here. Oh my God. She may have forgotten after training after that. May have forgot who she is. Very aggressive clothesline by Naya Barella. My first time seeing uh, Barella, but I have a feeling it won't be my last. Jesse K. Tag back in. Originally a native of Baltimore, Maryland. And K. Certainly uh, outsizes Blake. Suplex. Two count only. K seems very adept at using her power. She plants her feet. She's not going to go anywhere she doesn't want to go. And Blake trying to maneuver her, but you can see Jesse K just shuts the issue back down. And just elevates Blake with ease, shaking her about. Blake may have no choice but to submit here. She's trying frantically to get out of this barrel, but I mean, she's so far off the ground, she's got no leverage here. All she can do is really punch her way out. Swinging wildly, Kay tried to cover up all. Blake got her good that last time. Came down hard across the shoulder blade. Barella comes in to try to cause a bit of a distraction. I guess she did because Nevea was tagged in, but the official didn't detect it. This matchup, the tide was about to turn. Barella back in now as Kay does a great job. And there's the advantage of uh, training under one of the greatest tag teams of all time like the Dudleys. Kay with a grapevine on Blake prevents Blake from making a tag by not letting Blake out of the, uh, out of the grasp of Jesse Kay. And uh, did not let go of Blake until Barella was ready to take over, which she has done. Quite well. Jeez. Physicality speaks for itself. But the roll up, roll up. Blake with a desperation maneuver and thought she could get to the corner, get to Nevea, who again is getting very frustrated. She hasn't been involved in this matchup in a good five minutes or so. Barella looking right at Nevea while she does it too. Running space in the head of the OI4K member as Barella Look at this. Sir Ford tight maneuver. Can can she get her up? Can she get the lever? She got her. Stretching away. You can see the damage done, not just to the oh no, now wrenching the neck as well. You can see what an awkward angle. Brittany Blake is. Naya Barella. Oh, couldn't keep road shoulders off the canvas. That was a pinning combination. Blake was technically on top of Barella. Naya almost pinned herself in that exchange. It's happened before. It almost happened here on WEW Bloody Mess. Barella at high risk. The handspring standing moonsault doesn't pay off. Brittany Blake. She's in her corner. Can she reach out to Nevea? She does. Here we go. Nevea all over Jesse K. Naya comes in as well. And Nevea gets two for the price of one. And Nevea, a, a woman on her own here, as Brittany Blake still recovers in the corner, but she's doing a heck of a job. 
There's that OI4K intensity. Naya tried to help out. That didn't work. Nevea, both women trapped in the corner. Look at this. Nevea with Naya and Kay together as Nevea gets a two count. Nevea is able with her two opponents grabbing onto each other to use the momentum to force both to the canvas at once. Almost like uh, using an opponent as a tag partner. But Jesse K drops Nevaeh with a face buster. That flatliner changes the game. But don't forget about Brittany Flake. Compact drop kick connects. Naya from the blind side. Oh, snaps off a DDT. And that's gonna do in Brittany Blake, but keep in mind, Nevea is the legal woman. Naya fights free from the fireman's carry. German suplex with a bridge, that'll do it. Give credit to Brittany Blake for withstanding so much punishment throughout the course of this matchup, that staying power enabled Jesse K. Hey, wait a second. Now Naya and Jesse K are going at it. Brittany Blake's staying power led to Nevaeh coming in and putting the opponents away but Naya seems to be blaming Jesse K. There's a malfunction in the junction, if you will, but those are your winners. Here to start us off, Women's Extreme Wrestling. Introducing Fred in the corner to my left, fighting out of Pilot Station, Texas. to my right, Woo! out of Glasgow, Scotland, this is Nikki Stoll. We are going Sorry, underground. Underground here with WEW Bloody Mess. He's going to take you out too. He's going to touch me, he's going to touch you. Barbie Hayden on the left side of the ring. and. Currently being examined is Nikki Storm. I like that John, guys. Welcome. <laughs> Nikki Storm. Uh, positive personality here. Happy to be here as part of WBW, eight year pro. Native of Scotland. Xenophobic of Barbie Hayden. Nikki Storm worked for eight years. To, eight year, eight years to get here. She's gonna leave. Huge opportunity. I don't think so. Sorry to hear that. Crowd of Fitness will be behind Nikki Storm. English? What's her problem? And Nikki Storm tired of being pushed around. 
Ms. Hayden, you might not want to mess with Nikki Storm. She's been an athlete since high school. She played three different sports. She's a fitness instructor, a personal trainer. She studied advanced nutrition, anatomy, and physiology. She knows what she's doing in there. But let's not discredit Barbie Hayden, native of College Station, Texas. Trained in part by Funaki. She's been all over North America, U.S., Canada, Mexico. Youngest uh, female title holder in the history of the NWA. Peaked at number 12 on the Pro Wrestling Illustrated Top 50 Women in the World in Pro Wrestling. Barbie Aiden is loud. She's opinionated. She's not the most popular. But I don't think there's any denying that she can get the job done. She can produce. She can deliver. Nikki Storm. Go back home. Just go back home. Deprived of oxygen as Hayden continues to be rather xenophobic and tells Nikki Storm to go back home. Storm is a major success story back home. She was on national television on British boot camp. She was revered all over her homeland for her expertise on fitness, on training, on athleticism. Nikki Storm, this is a natural progression here to make her way to the United States to pursue her pro wrestling dream. And we we found her underground here in WEW, trying to make a name for herself in this, this secret matchup. The only way to have seen this matchup was to know where to find it until now. But WEW bringing you the best of female professional wrestling anywhere and everywhere. A very disingenuous no. apology no. from Barbie Hayden. Storm getting frustrated. Speak English. Oh, come on. English, okay? Why does Barbie Hayden not understand no. accents? No. Nikki Storm trying to battle her way to her feet, crowd willing her on. These loyal, devoted fans have found this matchup and certainly not disappointed, but Hayden looking to disappoint Nikki Storm. What were you thinking, silly girl? Just mocking her again. Bad enough then. You get beat up, but for somebody to trash talk you the whole time. Aiden going for the knee, but Nikki Storm out of the way. And an offensive flurry, an explosion by Nikki Storm. Storm putting everything she has behind those shots. In with a drop kick now. Nowhere to go for Hayden in the corner. She was sandwiched and Nikki Storm, for maybe the first time in this matchup, can feel it. Neckbreaker coming up, no. Hayden with the reversal. Up and down with a belly to back suplex. Nikki Storm maybe hurt. Landed right in the back of her head. This could be it. Got her. No. A very Close fall and very awkward landing to Hayden's point on Nikki Storm, but the official makes the call here. That was not great. And Hayden looking to uh, eliminate all doubt. I went to snap that DDT. Storm reversing. Modified neck breaker, nicely done. And she got her! Congratulations! Congratulations, Nikki Storm, all the way from Scotland. An athlete all of her life. It paid off here on WEW.
with a major, major victory. Looks like we'll be seeing a lot more of Nikki Storm in the future, and we'll be we'll be hearing a lot more of Barbie Hayden. Action continues on WEW Bloody Mess. Oh, match underway. It's going to be Sassy Steph one on one with Solo Darling. And these ladies waste no time upping the physicality right off Jump Street. Sassy Steph, formerly from Akron, Ohio, now makes her residence in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Steph has uh, been a little bit under the radar to some, but has amassed quite a reputation and resume for herself. Capturing championships and getting victories in pretty much every major women's organization you can think of. She's been on national television. She's been from coast to coast. Steph. Got a bit of a, bit of a humiliating effect there by her opponent, Solo Darling. Darling is seven-year pro. I believe Steph has a couple of years on Darling as far as ring time, but, but not much. Darling, native of Bronx, New York, so you know she's tough. Sometimes called the sugar-fueled seductress. Darling, well, well, get to more on Darling in a second. First, let's see what kind of agility she possesses. Nice maneuver, twists herself in midair to get some leverage and then uses it to take Steph down with the arm drag. Darling's very impressed by herself, certainly. Two ladies who have uh, tirelessly worked on their craft over the years and are really just beginning to see the fruits of their labor come out. Just beginning to uh, to get the buzz that they, they both so richly deserve in my estimation. Steph sends Darling for the ride and well, it's clear that Steph has brought a little bit of backup. Can't say that uh, I'm surprised. Steph can be very uh, well, she can be very stubborn at times. And she can be very intent on victory, sometimes to a fault. Snapmare. And now, Steph using the uh, the legs, the thigh muscles, to uh, trap Darling in place and using it to wrench and twist on the head and neck as well. And there's a variation of a scissor stomp. Darling's head planted right into the canvas. This could have done it. No. That will very quickly daze you and, and disorient you. Darling able to turn things around and get on top. But Steph shuts her back down again. Steph uh, shot to the back there, maybe looking to soften Darling up for her signature maneuver. Variation of a backbreaker she calls Kiss My Sass. Uh, that will most certainly do it if Steph gets the opportunity Double handful of hair. Darling lands on the back of her head this time. There's a two count. Steph is, uh, looks like she's trying to not, to ring the bell of Darling at this point. Just trying to knock her silly a number of different occasions. Crowd, uh, not very sympathetic towards Steph after what she's done. We'd like to see what Solo Darling's capable of. Solo Darling is trained in Louisville, Kentucky, which has produced more globally renowned wrestling stars than any other city, any other training center in the country right now. Men like Al Snow, Nick Dinsmore, Rip Rogers helped shape Solo Darling. And uh, Steph is mocking and uh, trying to deface what can only be described, and wait, there's a roll up by Darling, only be described as Solo Darling's tail. Yes, she has a tail, folks. She's sometimes called Squirrel Girl. 
It's obviously very uh, eccentric and a uh, bit of a cosplay homage to her personality. But when she gets in the ring, she certainly has the tools to be all business and get the job done. As you can see, disorienting Steph now, much as Steph had done to her earlier. Chopping the shoulders, and that could have very easily been a fitting combination. Darling in trouble, submission attempt here. That modified bow and arrow, and you can see the, the pressure being put not only uh, on the abdomen, which is being pulled up, but also the shoulders and the lower body as well, with the legs grapevined. And Steph frustrated that she could not get a submission. A curb stomp leads to a near fall, and Steph's starting to get a little bit frustrated. You know, it's easy to look at a woman and see that she has a tail and underestimate her. Or so I would imagine. Perhaps that's what Steph has done in this exchange. Darling sent for the ride, Steph. I went to charge in with the knee, but Darling out of the way. You can see Steph uh, landed with impact. She wedged herself into the corner. Solo go Darling to her feet, can she, can she get something going? And Darling, modified face buster, Steph in trouble. Step up, Senton, nicely done. Darling has this one, two and no. A great offensive maneuver by Solo Darling. Nearly wrapped this thing up. Darling to the outside. No idea what she's looking for. Oh, she has a beverage. Not sure what that beverage is. I hesitate to speculate. But hey, she's got a little pep in her step now. It's like pin it's like spinach to Popeye. Because Solo Darling is. Rejuvenated. And Steph doesn't know what to do with her. Steph out of the corner, dazed. And Darling with a face buster. I think Steph's been knocked out. I think Steph's uh, accomplice knows it. This match should be over. Solo Darling should have the victory. Darling with a fireman's carry step, elbows out of it. Oh, wait a second. That's kiss my sass. Right across the back of the neck, kiss my sass, sassy step wins. Introducing first in the corner to my left, fighting out of Lisbon, Portugal, she is Portugal's perfect athlete. This is Shana! not doing anything to endear herself to uh, the crowd here at this underground secret show from WEW Bloody Mess as Shauna taking care of uh, Jules Malone from Jump Street here. Shauna calls herself Portugal's perfect athlete. She's a 10 year pro. She was born in Portugal. She, has, uh, she currently resides in France. But uh, here in America right now, looking to make a name for herself at the expense of the self-proclaimed hardcore princess and the diva slayer. Talking about Jules Malone. Shout out. Able to take Malone down 
into the cover in the early going. Could be it. No. Near fall situation. But uh, I'll tell you what, Shauna's come off out of the blocks very aggressive, very focused. And Malone, the five and a half year pro, out experienced by Shanna. Currently out uh, outmatched in the aggression category as Shanna drapes the leg across that second ring cable and has full control at the moment. Shanna with the full extension of the leg across the throat in the corner. And Malone has not really been able to, to get out of the blocks here. She hasn't been able to develop any kind of momentum. And Shanna has been very aggressive. Very, uh, very overpowering thus far. Smothering even. And Malone, very, very talented. We've seen her before. She wants it. Wait a second, Malone slips in underneath. They got a two count. Malone once had a 405 day championship reign in Canada. She can get the job done here. Duck of the clothesline, pace quickens. Jules Malone with a satellite head scissors. Nicely done. Shanna is in trouble. Wait. Hook of the leg, Malone able to get a count of two. And man, Jules Malone feeling it now. Charging in with a clothesline. Nicely done. Shanna. Trying to spin out, do whatever she can. Ducks out of the way. Sidestep, Jules Malone coming into the corner. Malone hit face first. And Shanna with some uh, choice words and some choice actions to follow through. Shanna showing, uh, again, that aggression that uh, paid off for her in the early going as Shanna crimps the neck, has Malone trapped in a modified chin lock. Malone gasping for breath, exclaiming out in pain. She's had some major problems here. Portugal's perfect athlete, self-proclaimed, has really, really... He's dominated a, por a large portion of this matchup. Heavy blows right to the right to the sternum area. It's a count of two, and Shauna has come out to uh, to make an impact here. Very focused, very aggressive style. Malone is fighting for her life out there. Shauna ragdoll. This could do it. My gosh. Shanna trying to pull the hair up by the roots. Shanna intimidating the official. That'll get you disqualified. I'm not really sure uh, how they do things in Portugal, but let's keep this one-on-one -on -one here. The official's there to make a call and not be a part of the action. Nice suplex by Shanna. Side salto, if you will. As now a modified Cobra Clutch. Malone is down on her rear end. She's got really no leverage to, to battle up from this at this point. Shauna is knowingly and purposefully leaning over top of Jules Malone, which only intensifies the impact of this hold, which looks to target the carotid artery and cut off the blood supply to the brain. Malone continues to have a very difficult time getting oxygen in. And credit to the approach that Shauna has had throughout this match. Malone to her feet. Only for a moment. Oh, got dropped right across the knee. Backbreaker style. And Shauna with a short arm clothesline. Oh, Shauna is just 
Just unstoppable. Stacks her up and nearly got her. Man, this is a, uh, this is a high impact affair between Shauna and Jules Malone. Malone came in with a reputation of a, a hardcore princess, and Shauna's come prepared. But Malone pushes off Shauna. Got the face buster. Could that be? No. Thought that could be it. Malone pulled that face buster from out of nowhere. Fireman's carry. Might have been trying to finish off Shanna, but Shanna, did she go to the eyes? And a stunner! Shanna with a stunner. You can see the impact. It set Malone flying, and that's going to beat her. Ladies and gentlemen, you're the winner of the match at Benson to the Finals. Portugal's perfect athlete, yeah. Shanna! Said it best, Portugal's perfect athlete. It's self-proclaimed, but hard to doubt or deny the ability of Shanna here in this particular outing. Victory over the very, very tough, very capable and proven Jules Malone from Portugal to Canada to your home. The absolute best international female stars here on WWE Bloody Mess. Oh, you talk about physicality. Our feature here on WWE Bloody Mess, it's Lufisto with the red hair. Currently working on Allison K, Miss AK 47 herself. Lufisto is a defending women's world champion in this contest. And Lufisto is a veteran of nearly two decades in wrestling wars. A native of Montreal, Quebec. She's trained in Quebec as well as Japan. And she is one of the most fierce female athletes anywhere in professional wrestling. She has won standard wrestling tournaments. She's won deathmatch wrestling tournaments. She's won female deathmatch wrestling tournaments and male deathmatch wrestling tournaments. She brings science, she brings violence. She's got the best of both worlds. She's called the uh, first lady of hardcore and with good reason. Allison Kay finding that out the hard way. Allison Kay is the challenger and Allison Kay is very capable in her own right. You wouldn't know it in the early going as Lufista with a, a very intense and focused start Allison Kay, a Detroit native, a seven-year pro. She has uh, spent time training not just in professional wrestling, but mixed martial arts as well. That mentality could come in to help her out in this contest, but Lofisto does not want to give the opportunity for that to even occur. Lufisto with a step over toll to Allison Kay. I believe Kay is the taller of the two. Lufisto is doing a great job in grounding and neutralizing the height of Allison Kay. And Lufisto, my gosh, the aggression. Allison Kay sneaks in an elbow to the nose. This is not going to be pretty. Even though both girls are capable of it, I don't think it's going to be technically sound. This is going to be smash mouth and in your face, and I'm looking forward to watching it unfold. And Kay got her legs swept from under her, and Lufisto right back to the ground game on Allison Kay. You notice when Kay got to her feet, she was able to get something going, able to shift uh, the momentum a little bit. Lufisto, using some of her own MMA know how, the knees to the head, just trying to knock out Allison Kay. Turns over the step over toe hold as the leg grapevine, almost a reverse figure four. I can't picture Allison K tapping out. Even under normal circumstances, let alone a women's world title match. And Lefisto. Notice the uh Kay was able to get to the ropes to force a break. And Lefisto 
gave her just a second, just whatever she legally had to. Kate tried to crawl away as quickly as possible in a defensive ma manner, and Lefisto just came out swinging once again and still is. Lefisto been all over the challenger thus far. Nobody there in the corner, and there you see the extension of the leg. The height advantage of Alice and Kay coming through. DDT spikes her. Alice and Kay are our first major stretch of offense here, only a count of one. Lufisto powers out early. Series of rights cover. Nothing doing. <laughs> Allison K with a modified straight jacket. Got that one arm. Almost using it to, to have Lufisto choke herself here. Allison K, you can hear the trash talking. Throughout, now covers Lufisto, shoulder up. And Allison K has turned the tides. Lufisto in trouble, fireman's carry. Allison K with a running Samoan drop, nicely done. This could do it here. Oh. Let's not underestimate or understate the toughness and tenacity of both women. I talked about it a little bit at the top of this uh, matchup. But I don't know if if you could find two women as tough as uh, Lufisto and Allison Kay. I don't know if they have peers. I don't know if there are parallels elsewhere in this industry. Okay, uh, choking uh, and stretching Lufisto across that, that ring cable. That's not that's uh, deceptively unpleasant, those tightly enforced ropes. Not a lot of give in them. They'll leave welts, they'll leave marks, and Allison Kate roll through and a modified uh, Kimura lock on Lufisto. But again, much like uh, Allison K, I can't really picture Lufisto tapping out. Lufisto extends just the toe. Is all she got on the ring rope to ne necessitate the break. That was all she needed, but great ring, ring awareness by Lufisto to know she was close enough, but just barely. There's uh, Allison K follow through in the corner. Kay has been all over the world in her own right. Japan, Europe, all over North America. Allison Kay went to charge in, but Lofisto out of the way and got the foot up. Never underestimate the endurance of Lofisto. Multiple time tournament winner hits a drop kick from the top. Lofisto with renewed life. Got a huge slam in. Roll through Senton, cover, got her, no. Near fault situation there. And Allison K. Oh, that was a knee right to either the temple or the ear by Lufisto. Either way, that's gonna mess up Allison K's equilibrium or sense of balance as this matchup progresses. And now once again, using the ropes, as a tag team partner, if you will, just gonna bend and stretch Kay's body awkwardly across the ring. And Kay can't get herself free. And again, the balance issues, wait, as now she does. Lufisto was planning something uh, that could have put this match up away. If there's any doubt how hard these women could hit. All you've got to do is just listen in. Lufisto been to Canada, Mexico, Japan, Germany, England. She calls herself the first lady of hardcore and with good reason. 
She's uh, spread their reputation everywhere, all over the world. As more knees to the side of the head. By Lufisto, now the cannonball. Alice K, dazed, but able to recover with a bicycle kick. Alice K could be a new world champion. And only a near fall. Well, that was amazing uh, recuperatory skills by Alice K. Lufisto just launched herself like a projectile into Alice K in the corner, but she was able to was able to suck it up and come back with that bicycle kick. Again, the pain threshold and the resiliency on these two women may be without peer. Both women uh, seeking solace on the outside and that's gonna backfire here. Lufisto just kicked the knee out from under Allison K. And here the impact is K gets the better of that exchange, and thankfully her knee doesn't seem to have any long-term damage. And Lufisto just looked like she was trying to dislocate it. But to Allison K presses on. Ooh, Lufisto hits the steel guardrail hard. And again, we talk about the power and leverage that Allison K possesses. When she's able to do her own thing, when she's able to, to be on her feet. This is what Lufisto's trying to uh, have avoided this entire match. Okay, well, barely breaks the referee's 10 count by sliding just a little bit of her body, but what is this? Oh my gosh! Okay, grape finds. Lufisto and drapes her across the edge of the ring frame. That's where metal meets wood. It's the hardest part of a wrestling ring. And Lufisto may be injured. Allison Kay cannot win the world championship on a count out. You heard her asking the official to make sure. She understands the rules and she does. She's got to uh, get Lufisto back in the ring if she wants to be a champion. Oh, wild, wild kick by Allison K. She got part of it right in the mouth of Lufisto, but Lufisto was able to grab onto K and drive K down awkwardly on the edge of that ring frame. Both women got the worst for wear in that exchange. Lufisto going high risk up top. Allison K able to put the brakes on to Lufisto. Both women are battling. Oh, jeez. Highly physical headbutts. No! Oh! Lufisto with a double stomp. Allison K landed on her head. Oh, Lufisto using gravity as a tag team partner there. That'll do it. No! I don't know how Allison K was able to kick out of that. Was very impressive. Now, Lufisto, double underhook. Oh, right in the temple. K caught her right in the temple, knocked her out. No. Another near fall, and even Allison K. Can we get a replay? Can we get a replay? She's looking for a replay. Alison K thought that was it, but just a tenth of a second or so off, and that momentary doubt that K had, that's all Lufisto needed. Oh, charging through with the forearm smash. Lufisto, double underhook. Oh my God. Good night, what? Lufisto's version of a, a Tiger driver the Tiger Driver, not enough. AK-47 still has some artillery. Oh. Fisto 
They've been going for a burning hammer DDT. Wild discus swing by Allison K. Backslide, but couldn't control K's weight. Oh, the Aja Kong back fist. And now, dropped her in the back of her neck. Lufisto retains the world championship. What an awkward landing. Lufisto, a reverse fireman's carry, a burning hammer type of position, and just dropped AK-47 down on her head. DJ Hyde, the executive presiding over this world title match, is in the ring, and the sassy Steph as well. What is this about? Thing for a man to do. Steph him completely humiliated and psychologically destroyed Lufisto. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. WEW Bloody Mess, DJ Hyde and Sassy Steph get the last word, but Lufisto, you gotta believe we'll have a response to this.
Chances are you scared to quit?